A large open area lay ahead of me, closed off by a tall bamboo fence. There was also a small area off to the side for more delicate washing. Sighing to myself, I began to tidy up the place a little, removing sharp objects and small obstacles that the drunken woman might injure herself with, and waited. Five minutes went by before I heard the door open and close, followed by the gentle slosh of someone stepping into the water of the hot spring. Ah, the water's great! Hurry up and get in! Well, whatever happened to Attack Attack? I turned around expecting her to be standing in the water with a clothes on. However, the sight that awaited me was far, far from what I would have expected from Sundera Tyrant. There was no katana slicing through the air or any harsh words being shouted. Instead, an attractive looking girl wearing a simple towel had decided to take a seat in the water. But Mio-san! Whether it was the result of the drinking or not, the warm smile she showed me caused me to pause. Care to join me? Uh, I don't think- Ugh! Get in the water! Yes, ma'am! I quickly moved closer to the water, nearly slipping on the wet tiles before I made my way in. I folded up my robe, but kept the towel I had found around my waist. Today's been pretty busy, huh? Though the last thing I expected was for all of you to gulp down sake like a baby drinks its milk! The girl said nothing for a while, regarding me with a faint grin on her face. It made me nervous. I would almost rather have her shouting and angry. You don't slack off, do you? I can tell that you train a lot. Huh? Briefly caught off guard by her comment, I quickly gathered my thoughts and nodded in return. Well, I practice judo, so it's natural for me to train my body a lot. I'm sure the same can be said of you, Mia-san. I mean, you look, um, rather feminine, but I could tell you knew how to handle a sword. That shows diligence and talent, but above all, experience. You started young, didn't you? I did. She leaned back against the rocks and let out a sigh. It took me a long time before to become independent with a blade. Days and nights of endless training, regardless of wind and weather. All in order to toughen myself up to make myself strong enough. It's horrible, knowing nothing of your early life. I just turned up here in rags. The guards found me out in the woods one day while on patrol, starving and dirty. The previous village elder took pity on me and took me in. Everything went well for a while. Natami's family took me in and treated me like one of their own. Then everything fell apart. Seeing the village had taken me in, fed me, clothed me, gave me shelter, suffering at the hands of spirits. I couldn't take it. As she spoke, she set out another sigh. It seemed alcohol was take making her a bit more talkative than usual, which wasn't a bad thing. I just hoped I wouldn't end up paying for it when she'd sobered up. After that, I felt like I had to do something. I couldn't just sit by while everything fell apart around me. The village was devastated by the fires. On that day, I pleaded with a former chief to guard and trade me, to make me stronger. I wanted to protect the village, to protect Nodobi at any cost! He eventually agreed, but told me that I would need to strengthen my resolve first. And that's why you became a... uh... you can say it... a Tsundere tyrant? I don't know what Tsundere means, but the tyrant part isn't far off. I didn't want to drive everyone away, least of all Nodobi. But I had to, in order to not feel the pain of loss again. Spirits haven't been our only problem. Bandits, beasts, and the weather. The village needed protecting from all of it. It became a purpose, and it made me distance myself from everyone else. I guess that explains why you've been acting like that around Machiko and Mayako. That's right. Although, I am beginning to think that perhaps we can coexist. The fox spirits, at least. I suppose this has something to do with you, so, uh, thank you. You're, um, you're welcome. It's not like I did much. I mean it. Truly, you and the sisters. You may have saved me a life of living in fear, perhaps even prevented my death. I think you better tell them all that. You're right, especially considering what comes next. Huh? What do you mean? The girl's words were becoming incoherent, muttering something about spirits in the village. It seems like the fatigue was finally taking its toll. Hmm, well, the other spirits probably won't be leaving the village alone anytime soon. We're going to have to figure out how to stop them. But asking Maiko Chan and Machiko San to help is like asking you to turn on Nanabi Chan. Ha <laughs> ha! Turn on! The girl giggled at this for quite some time, so I let out a sigh and coughed politely. <clears throat> what I meant to say was, they'll have a fight against their own some kind at some point. I mean, why would they want to help you guys out in the first place? I think you and Nanabi Chan will be the pieces we need to solve this puzzle. And we better figure out what to do soon. I doubt those spirits will hold back next time. Sound like you make it sound like some kind of game. That's not nice. As she said this, the girl slid further down in the water. It's a bit easier to think of it like that. 
The moment they get ahead of us, it's game over. If you and Natami-chan fix things between the villagers and the sisters, things might work out. You'll have to get as close to them as possible. Ah! But I... I don't like girls like that. The girl became incredibly flustered by my comment, having misunderstood what I had said. Before I could explain, she slumped over, her cheeks a deep crimson red. As I tried to move closer, it became clear that she had passed out. The heat had probably gotten to her. Just my luck, she had to pass out wearing nothing but a towel. I swear, someone up there is testing my patience with all these temptations. Sighing in annoyance, I carefully wrapped my arms around the girl and pulled her out of the water. Realizing that leaving Mio here would be a bad idea, I thought about what to do when Natami came barging in. Takahito-kun! I heard you were in here! I managed to... Whoa! What's going on here? It's not what you think. The great captain couldn't handle the heat. Could you take over here? Hey, <laughs> sure, that's what happened. I believe you, you stud. Come on, I'll take her. I'll make sure she gets a good night's rest. But if you did stuff to her while she was drunk, she's gonna kick your ass. I'll, sh I'll ref I shall refrain from provoking her wrath. The last thing I need is a hungover samurai trying to turn me into shish kebab. I motioned for Narumi to come over. You should get some rest too, Takeda-kun! And make sure you keep an eye on Kichan! She's a little restless right now! Leave her to me, she'll be in good hands. And with those words, I left Nadami to take care of the passed out captain. I quickly changed into the robes I had borrowed and made my way back to the main hall. As expected, I found Machiko curled up on the floor. Thankfully, it looked like she had made her way to Mayako and was cuddled up next to her. The two girls looked adorable, and their cute mumblings only made it all the more enjoyable to watch. I considered waking them up so we could return to the mansion, but the sound of my name interrupted my train of thoughts. Walking out to the garden beyond the room, into the wooden deck, I found the village elder sitting on the grass looking up at the stars. Young man, are the stars here as beautiful in your world? I walked over to him and lay down flat against the grass, finally allowing myself a rest. I looked up at the night sky and smiled. You know, I never really got a good look at them. I'm always busy with this or that. I yawned loudly and felt my eyelids getting heavy as I wiggled around a bit in an effort to get comfortable. Perhaps you should. If you get back, that is. The previous elder once told me that all worlds shared the same sky. It sounded silly to me, but maybe there's something to it. Hmm, I mean it does look familiar. Sparkly and black. Maybe he was right. The elder remained silent for a while. When he spoke again, I could barely make out what he said, sleepiness taking over. Before long, I drifted off to sleep beneath that starry sky. <laughs>